Dr. Lucy Hoville, International Refugee Rights Initiative. We talk about uh, refugees, in this case, not in Europe, but in Africa, because, uh, of course, the narratives are especially about the arrival of uh, asylum seekers in uh, Britain, in Europe, but uh, uh, there are many and uh, the numbers are greater, the numbers of uh, people who are looking for asylum uh, inside Africa, especially Eastern and uh, Central Africa. You made an extensive research about it, you also wrote a book. What are the main results? Well, I think one of the key findings is that people want an end to their marginalisation and people are going to push very hard for that to happen. So whereas refugees are constantly being kept on the edges of societies, the more that they can be allowed to integrate, then they can find a new life for themselves. I think many of the people that are coming to Europe are people who haven't managed to integrate in other contexts and they are very, very frustrated. I think also the issue of um, mobility is crucial, that people need to be allowed to move. It's a very important coping mechanism for people who need to seek safety and people need to be able to move to find that but I think also people are looking for places that they can belong where they can educate their children where they can look after their families and I think that we need to make sure that policies enable this to happen rather than try to stop people from moving in the first place. Which countries and ethnic groups are involved in your research? Because uh, we talk about different wars and crises which affected uh, several countries in Eastern and uh, Central Africa. Okay, so really my, uh, the main focus was Burundi, Rwanda, Congo, Uganda, Sudan, South Sudan um, and Tanzania. That was the main focus of, of our research. And so it was people who were displaced from those countries or to those countries. Is it true that sometimes uh, it is uh, so difficult to find uh, a settlement in uh, new African countries and so people prefer to migrate to Europe uh, even uh, in dangerous conditions and even in uh, uh, without any, uh, nobody is uh, assuring them they will have uh, uh, papers, we have job and uh, settlements, but uh, they still hope more in Europe than uh, in neighboring African countries. I think if people can't find safety and they can't find livelihoods, they will move because people at the end of the day want to look after their families. So I think however much they tr be European countries try to, try to stop people moving, they will still move. If they can't find a life for themselves in displaced within the region, then they, ha they have no choice really but to move on. Many countries which are welcoming uh, uh, a lot of refugees, like for example Ethiopia or uh, Tanzania, they have uh, poor resources. So uh, is it uh, possible to help uh, people in Africa or is it uh, more realistic uh, to accept them in Europe? Well, I think the problem isn't generally lack of resources, it's poor governance. I think what we need to be doing is address the root causes that actually lead to the economic problems that people are facing. So in the first instance, a lot more needs, needs to be done to address these issues of governance. But yes, I think it, it's also about burden sharing, which is about making sure that European states actually pull their weight rather than constantly just throwing money at a problem that's far away from them effectively. So finally, there is a risk that uh, if you will say we help people at home in uh, neighboring countries, we could finance uh, also their government or maybe dictatorships. Yeah, that's, that's true and I think that a lot of humanitarian assistance is given very badly and is misdirected without a doubt. So I think it's, there needs to be a lot more work to make sure that the money reaches to exactly the right place.